Hey together, and the Black Dragons back, and I welcome all of you to another part of Xenoblade Chronicles Wolves. So, last episode we made it to Torigoth. I was unsure here for a moment. As you can see, I didn't do anything here with the people at the moment, because uh, it would have been just me talking to a few people and that's that. Instead, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go down here and get to our next objective rather quick in this episode. This whole thing with core crystals, touching them to create blades. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. We blades start out formless, anchored to the world only by our core crystal. Only the touch of a potential can imbue us with form and being. And it is by those forms we come to be known. So you see, my boy, in some ways it is only the fated touch of a driver that allows the blades to exist at all. Wow. Why does it happen that way, though? Now, that is something no one knows. It's just how it's always been. Blades come in all shapes and sizes. Some human-shaped, some not. Some people say the shape depends on the kind of person the driver is. The resonance between blade and driver is a mysterious thing. Pyra, she was crying when I met her. Was she brought to life by someone once? Just like a normal blade? What is the Aegis? Really? Halt! Nobody move! Oh dear. Looks like Imperial troops. Great. Hey, what's going on? That fugitive in your company is an enemy of the state, a member of Torna. Nia? A member of Torna? It's her, all right. Gormothy Driver, White Beast Form Blade. She looks exactly like the wanted poster. What wanted poster? See for yourself. Wow, it really does. Oi, watch it. Uh, I mean, no way. This doesn't look anything like. Wait, we've got no time for this. Who cares if it looks just like her? Hmm. Now, as for you, you look like a driver too. Registration number? 539? Knock it off, you fool. All new drivers must register with Endor. No number means you must be an illegal, unregistered driver. No, you don't get it. You're coming with me. We'll see what the Consul has to say about this. Rex, Dromak and I are going to make a move. Get ready to run. We're not leaving without you. This is our problem, not yours. I'm pretty sure he wants to arrest all of us. So this is my problem, too. Sheesh. You're a stubborn one, in you? Gramp says the same thing. Okay. We go on three. We'll go left, you go right. Okay. Just give the word. Okay, let's do this. You, you, you're going to resist? Seriously? One. Two. All right, then. We've got them outnumbered. Move in and take them down. Three! Let's show them a thing or three. Off into a fight it is. It's time for me to tell you about cancel attacks. We already do this the whole time. Whenever we want, want to use an arm, right before we connect with the enemy, Use the art so you can slow out of that, you deal more damage and other things that are good for you as well. That's why I'm doing most of my attacks like this, so I charge up my arts a little bit quicker. Also the reason why I'm at the moment uh, always... Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say at the moment. But there's something that I want to say here that is more important than anything other at the moment. And that is, at the beginning of fights like this, you are not able to 
reorganize the party. That's again, I told you that before, but it's still super annoying that you have to do this before the fights this time in this game. I don't get why they took that out of the game. It's frustrating that it is that way. And I would have loved it if they didn't switch it around on us. Because it was incredibly useful to switch around your party and with what character you want to fight before the fight starts and not be way before the fight starts. So I'm a little bit frustrated about that part. Other than that, that fight's easy if you're good enough of a combo. From a measly two fighters. Their drivers are right. Rex, no! You got it. Wow. A wall made of fire. Such a commotion. Just when I thought I could enjoy a little peace and quiet. Oh, lady, Bridget. Bridget? Is she a blade? Where, where's a driver? My driver is otherwise engaged at present. I am here alone. No driver? <laughs> Lady Bridget is the jewel of Morrison, the strongest blade in the Empire. Even alone, she's more than a match for you. Lady Bridget, these miscreants are terrorists working for Torna. Please lend me your power to bring them to justice. Hmm. That emerald core crystal. Could it really be true? Well then, Captain Padre, you are not to kill them. Take these ones in alive. Roger. Men, bring the you know what up! Now we have a bigger fight. Let's take uh, care of the captain here first. He is weaker than Bridget and just annoying. So take care of him first, make it a bit easier on you. And with your anchor shot and the healing arts from Nia, you should have no problem with that. Especially again, if you... You may have gotten the gist of yourself already. But let me go into a little more detail about late combos. I got it! Don't... Thank you also for doing this game. Like, that's exactly the opposite of what I wanted to do there. But whatever. So let's try and get rid of him first. We have lots of small potions there. Let's collect them so that we have that out of the way. This is the first moment where I say you should train up a little bit before you go into the fight. So all the enemies and monsters that you see outside of the area and the first mission, the first uh, side quest that you see outside as well is one that I tell you you should do before you go into this fight so that you're a little bit higher level because Bridget herself is already a strong enemy and you should take care of her in an orderly fashion and be prepared for the fight because as you can see Bridget deals a heck of a lot of damage so let's see what we can do here. We deal a lot of damage again. We're going for straight damage at the moment. Can't wait until we have a bit stronger equipment and the abilities are stronger, but for the moment we're doing fine. So let's charge our combo up a little bit because we need to wait for Nia to reach level 2. We can't do anything with her at the moment. So let's do that. And we should be able to now use our burning sword. So let's charge that up. And there we go. Burning sword. Here we go. Quick time events. Always hit it on the lighter blue area. So there we go. Now a steam bomb to make this even more worthwhile. And charge up level 3. Pretty sure we don't need it anymore. Because Bridget will be done before we even get to use it. Whatever. Yeah. 
What? She... she repelled our attack. She's so... strong. Mm. And this is without a driver. Stop yammering! Just get it! <laughs> Let's see you use your precious arts when you can't draw ether from the atmosphere. Even blades have weaknesses. This is one such weakness. Without the flow of ether, blades are quite useless. Nia, draw mark! Get out of here, Rex! Save yourself! I'm not gonna do that. I can't just leave you here. You've got your own mission, just move it! Yeah, but... No bets. Go! Rex, we must withdraw for now. It's our only chance. But... You won't escape. Ah! Ah! Rex! Ah! Damn it! Ah! Ah! Water! Despite all this water. So, the legends of the ages were real. Hey! Hey! This way! Friends! Come this way! Tora, help you escape! Who are you? Quick! No time for explain! Thanks. You saved us. But I gotta ask, why? No reason. No reason? Sorry, that's not true. Truth is, Tora not like those big bully soldiers. Was thinking to test out shiny new boom biter on big bullies. That's when Tora see friends running from them. Boom biter missed and hit water pipe. But results not so bad, hey? Oh. So you shot the pipe. That right. And you're Tora. I'm Rex. And this is Pyra. It's so lovely to meet you. Good to meeting. <laughs> huh? Ah, oh, actually, Tora have other reason for save you. Which is? Don't worry. Explain everything when get to House of Tora. This way. I just quickly want to say that this is probably the most useless part they could have taken you out of a cutscene and into the game because all you have to do is go down here and you go straight into another cutscene. The boy and his blade who seemed to be working with them got away. But we apprehended the girl from the wanted poster along with her blade. The town is once again safe for... She, si, Podrick. Do you remember what my orders were? Sir? I told you to capture the blade with the Emerald Core Crystal, did I not? Do you recall me ever telling you to capture some little girl with barely a bounty on her head? But, sir, she's a member of Torna. I'll say it slowly for you, just so we're clear. Get the blade with the emerald. Um, Consul Doodle, sir. What? I'm not exactly sure what color emerald is supposed to be. Oh, give me strength! It's green, you idiot! Emerald is green! Like this! Green! Get it, ya clod? Oh, green! A 
get it now. So emeralds are green. Huh. You dunderhead! How many blades do you see with green core crystals? It's patently obvious. How do you mix that blade up with some worthless cat monster? Actually, sir, technically I believe that's a tiger rather than a... Silence! Ah. Consul! What is it? Haven't you heard of knocking? My apologies, sir. It's just that Lady Morag has... What? Special Inquisitor Morag has just arrived from the Motherland. Already? Her ship has just docked. Look, this... this cannot be happening! You live down here. This just back door. Front entrance over there. Makes sense. Whoa! Is that the cloud sea down there? We're so high up. Nice view, eh? Tora likes to just sit and watch cloud sea sometimes. You have a wonderful home. <laughs> anyway, um, Rex Rex. Rex Rex? Rex Rex, Tora explain other reason I help you. You see, Tora always wanted to make driver friends. Ah, interested in drivers, are you? But of course. Tora think it's amazing how Driver and Blade join spirits together to make big power. Tora really want to be sidekick of Rex Rex. Um, you know my name is just Rex, right? One Rex, not two. What is point? Well, nothing, I guess. It just sounds a bit different from what I'm used to. Double name just show Tora's respect. Respect for great driver. Rex Rex should be proud. I'm not sure I've earned all that yet. Oh, all right. You can call me Rex Rex if it makes you happy. But instead of all this sidekick stuff, can't we just be friends? Really? Tora will be friend of Rex Rex? Hooray! <laughs> what a funny little guy. Hey, Tora, do you know much about this town? Huh? You wouldn't happen to know where the army takes prisoners, would you? Rex, you're not planning to... We have to save Nier and Dromark. I thought you'd say that. You talk about Driver and Blade who were with Rex Rex before Tora's daring rescue. Yeah. Meh meh. Tora would have to ask around town for info like that. Mm. Before we do anything, time for food. All of today's running around make Tora hungry. Need food to help Rex Rex. I'm a little peckish too. Can't we eat later? I want to find Nia and Dromok as soon as possible. <laughs> Stomach of Rex Rex tell different story. I... I can't help it, can I? Um... If it's all right with everyone, I could cook something. Pyra, I didn't know you could cook. <laughs> well, as long as fire is involved, I can do almost anything. Fry, steam, grill, you name it. Whoa! If you want ice cream, though, you might have to find someone else. Well, you can't have everything.
Tara, do you have any ingredients I could work with? Just what in the pantry there. Not much really. Tara, sorry. It doesn't seem wise to go out and buy more supplies, so we'll just have to make do with what we have. Let's see what we've got then. Glitter spots, spumpkins. Oh, and here's an oil oyster and a single meaty carrot. And hot oranges too. These aren't bad ingredients at all. All foods that can be eaten with no cooking. That's how Tora user usually eats. That's a bit depressing. We are much better ourselves, you know. I guess you're right. So what do you think, Pyra? Can you make anything with this? Yes, this... Yes, I think this should be enough. I'll just use the kitchen, okay? And another moment that shows really well that... Just letting you do something in between of the cuts and is enough gameplay for them at this point. What we're gonna do here is cook now, where we use a blade that has cooking abilities, like Pyra. And we could do more things if we had the ingredients, but glitter bake is the only thing that we have the ingredients for that we just got from Tora. So let's do that. Yes, please. Oh man, this is delicious. Oh, yum, yummy. So super, very tasty. Simply exquisite. I haven't eaten this well in 120 years. Glad you liked it. It seems like I did okay. I was worried I'd have gotten a little rusty over the years. It didn't taste rusty at all. Uh, um, I mean... But Tora is curious. Pyra is fire-using blade, yes? When Tora broke that water pipe, Pyra could still make fire. Come to think of it, you're right. That Bridget, the Imperial Blade, she used fire abilities just like Pyra, but the water seemed to douse much of her strength. So, what are you saying? This world full of elemental energy called ether, yes? Ether comes in forms like fire, water, and wind. While battling, drivers and blades both draw power from ether. But fire not good with water. Other blade woman got splooshy with water, so fire powers all damp. But Pyra and I were able to use our powers with no problem. Indeed. They were unaffected. Why? Um, well, my powers don't come from fire. Meh meh? If power's not fire, why look like flames? That may be a little complicated to explain. Go on then. Tora like complicated things a lot. <sighs> well, um, uh, 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 it... Knock it off, Tora. Can't you see you're making her uncomfortable? Eh. Everyone has things they'd rather not talk about. Right? I'm sorry. I'm sure I'll be able to tell you about it soon enough. Don't worry about it. Right now, we need to think about how to rescue Nia. First, we go around town and find all information we can. Hmm. Yes, I dare say that we're all wanted criminals by this point. Pyra sticks out like a sore thumb. I'm so sorry. Don't worry, friends. Tora has an idea. 